With this session update, I'm Shannon Lurkey. The Senate took up Senate File 173, a measure that would require photo identification to register to vote and to vote. Here are some highlights from the debate. Senate File 173 is a voter protection bill uh, that supports free and fair elections. And it supports free and fair elections in the following ways. First, voter ID detects and pre prevents voter fraud and does so by providing election judges with the proof the person proposing to cast a vote is in fact the person that they say they are. Voter fraud is a matter of historical fact irrespective of those who do not support voter identification requirements. Voter fraud is very difficult to detect. Uh, as a matter of fact, I heard uh, Senator Pratt uh, on the Senate floor uh, a week ago telling us about uh, his involvement in detecting fraud in the banking business and how difficult it was uh, to detect. Voter ID won't stop voter fraud, but it will help our in, uh, increase our ability to detect and thereby stop at least some voter fraud. Next, voter ID provides for provisional ballots for those who do not have the necessary government-issued identification card when casting their ballot. Provisional ballots are a positive voter protection measure as recognized by 46 states that have adopted provisional ballots. That's 46 of our states have adopted provisional ballots. Only North Dakota, New Hampshire, Idaho, and Minnesota have failed to pass Provision, provisional ballots uh, for protection for voters. Um, I would bring to your uh, attention, members, I, I did have a, a handout uh, that I've indicated uh, with states that currently provide for uh, provisional balloting. And uh, I, I simply wanted to bring that uh, specific states to your attention. So, Provisional ballots protect voters in two different ways. First, it gives a voter the opportunity to provide election officials with the necessary proof of identity so that their vote will be counted. Second, it protects those whose legal vote has been effectively canceled by someone who has cast an illegal vote. Number three, voter identification moves Minnesota into the 21st century by modernizing our system with tools like digital photography, the ease of transferring information, and the ease of acquiring necessary documents. In that regard, I have uh, uh, provided you with a, uh, uh, a handout that states with voter ID provisions, there are currently 34 in the nation. Uh, that I would bring your attention to. Finally, voter ID uh, serves to safeguard voter confidence. Public confidence in the integrity of our electoral process encourages citizens' participation in our democratic process. I acknowledge that some deny there is any problem with voter confidence. With them, I disagree. All we have to do is listen and open our eyes. There are millions of voters across this nation that are losing faith in that their vote counts. I have a computer file full of emails from voters and constituents across the state of Minnesota that are li literally begging us to go forward with this uh, voter ID bill. And they are begging us to do so because they have lost faith that their right to vote uh, counts. The myth of voter fraud and the resulting push of restrictive legislative proposals is unacceptable. We should be doing work to solve actual problems instead of imposing policies that place deliberate barriers in place of people exercising their right to vote. I'm disappointed that here in Minnesota, we're one of 43 states passing anti, trying to pass anti-voter legislation. These bills all across the country have the effect of disenfranchising voters, like Jim Crow laws of the past. Bills like this one primarily disenfranchise black, brown, indigenous, 
new American voters, and the elderly, seniors, uh, students, the disabled, and LGBTQ communities. They're powerful tools that work to keep communities from exercising the right to vote. The big lie about voter fraud is just that. It's a lie. On its surface, voter ID sounds fair. I completely concede that. On its surface, it makes sense. It really does. But in terms of its actual practical consequences, it is deeply anti-democratic. And that needs to be our focus, not on our ideas, but on the implications for actual living Minnesotans. My grandfather did not fight at the Battle of the Bulge for an idea of democracy. He fought to make it real. Fannie Lou Hammer did not organize for the sake of the idea of democracy. She organized to realize democracy. Voter IDs laws sound fair, but in reality, they aren't. Real fairness respects everyone's capacity for self-determination. Real fairness demonstrates faith in the people and faith in democracy. That's the real fairness to which we must aspire. Voter ID isn't really fair, and we can do better. The election involving Joe Biden and Donald Trump have absolutely nothing to do with me bringing this bill forward at this time. I categorically deny the assertion that this bill is on the Senate floor because of the Trump-Biden election. And I would remind the body that I first brought this bill to the Senate floor in 2012. I then again brought it, I then again filed the bill last year, and we got hit with COVID, and I couldn't come forward with the bill last year. I reintroduced the same bill again in 2021, and I am moving forward with it because I believe it's the right thing to do. I acknowledge that there is strong disagreement among some of my fellow senators, but I'm doing it because I think it's the right thing to do. I believe in it. It's a simple idea. We want all eligible voters to be able to vote, and we want them, we want their votes to count. All eligible voters to be able to vote, and we want their votes to count. This bill does that. It makes it easier for same-day voting and registration in, in ballots through provisional ballots. It won't turn anybody away at the polls. It pays for people to get the IDs, it will help reimburse for documents. If you don't have the documents, you just sign an affidavit and you get in. So members, this makes it easier for more people to vote and that they will have their vote count. It's simple, it's common sense, it's supported by 75% of Americans, 69% of Minnesotans support this idea. In Philadelphia, in the 1700s, we began this experiment. It's the longest ongoing experiment in world history, representative democracy. And that experiment that began in Philadelphia has spread across the continent over the next 200 and some odd years. The Constitution begins with the words, we the people. Yeah, the people that want to be welcomed. The people that want to be welcomed at the polls. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, it's a work in progress. Voting is a work in progress. The Lincoln, Lincoln in his Gettysburg Address, which by the way was shorter than my speech, he ends with government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. In our fellow chamber over here, above the speaker, it says Vox Populi, Vox Dei. The voice of the people is the voice of God. We need to be more inclusive, not less inclusive. It is a civic duty to vote. From township elections to presidential elections, 
Let's not impede the progress we've made in this great American experiment. Uh, there are efforts to limit the vote, to suppress the vote. Uh, our country has a violent history in the, the fight over the right to vote. A violent history in pursuit of suffrage. A violent history in the civil rights movement. We have seen things imposed like a poll tax, rampant gerrymandering by states so elected people can pick their voters and not the other way around. We know of current examples of efforts to purge voter rolls, to make it harder for people who have registered to vote to actually vote because their names have been stricken from the record without their knowledge. We know we have a history of arbitrary civics tests meant to deny people access to the ballot. We have a very difficult and sometimes violent history in our country over the sacred right to vote because it enshrines in the people the power to set our course. And that's why today's discussion is so disturbing. If people are losing faith in the integrity of our elections, it is because of the persistent rhetoric coming from elected officials. I would suggest to you that along with the right to cast that vote comes a certain amount of personal responsibility. Not one person has brought up that issue on the floor today. Personal responsibility. If you want to exercise your right to vote, you have to affirmatively do something in order to vote. You have to proactively get out there and vote. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. So I submit to you that along with all of the statements that have been made about the right to vote, there is a commonant part that goes right along with it, and that is the personal responsibility to get off the couch and go and vote. Think about what you do need to have a driver's license for. First of all, obviously driving. If you want to drive, you have to have a driver's license. If you want to go buy a, a bottle of wine, you have to have a driver's license or tobacco. If you're applying for Medicaid or Medicare, you have to have a driver's license. If you want to go hunting or fishing, you have to present a driver's license. Most business transactions, like a, a bank loan, you have to have a driver's license. If you have to take professional testing for just about anything, you have to have a driver's license. If you're going to apply for college, they want to see your driver's license. When you fill out a work form, or you want to work someplace, they're going to ask for your driver's license. VA benefits, show me your driver's license. If you want to get a passport, show me your driver's license. And if you don't have a passport and you're going to travel by plane, show me your driver's license. Now, they do make some accommodations in some of those uh, situations, but so does this bill for voting and presenting your driver's license. There being 34 ayes and 32 nays, the bill, pass, the bill is passed since Tyler agreed to. To continue following these issues and more, watch legislative coverage Monday through Friday on the PBS Minnesota channel or visit our website www.senate.mn/media